Take two. Let's, let's try this again. <laughs> We filmed an entire vlog and unfortunately our microphones weren't working. They worked for the like, first three minutes and then just cut out. Just oh, dead. That's too bad. I'm sure I had some witty and insightful things to share. I know I did. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were going to talk a little bit about companion planning today. I know that I we've had quite a few questions about what we're going to be putting in the ground, what we're going to be planting. and. We've been doing tons and tons of research looking at, you know, what is good in this area, also what we enjoy, what we like, and then how we can utilize it because we have four metal raised beds that we just got that we're putting in front of the house. We have our three raised beds from last year. We have our tomato strip, we have where our potatoes are, and then we have the large plot that's brand new this year. So we've got lots of different areas. They all get a little bit different um, sun and things like that. And we're also going to be separating out those plants that really don't do the best together because they bring in a lot of the same bugs and can devastate a whole area. So. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know when you admit you have a problem um, but it might be now. Uh, these are the seeds that I've been going through and wanting to plant. I've been collecting seeds for quite a while. If we go to stores and find a good price on them, they're on sale. Um, seeds really, I know you can have them for a significant amount of time as long as you keep them stored properly. Uh, I put them temporarily in these Ziploc baggies just so that I could mark where I wanted to plant them and also so that I I could know for sure that these could all go around the main crop that I'm looking for. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of this is going to go in one area, it just means all of this could go in one area. So Nate and I all kind of look and make decisions on how much of each one we want. But just wanted to kind of share in some of the research what I've done and what is a good companion and can go with and around potatoes. And then also um, the majority of all of these can also be completely fine with one another. There's several different flowers like uh, the nasturtiums, the calendula, the marigold, and then some herbs like with the basil and other things that you can put in multiple areas. So you may see repeats um, or you may not see it in one. We know it's still good in some of these areas. This is just um, kind of to help me with what we're thinking of and what we're planting. So uh, for this first section, this is what is going with the, I'm sorry, the po potatoes. 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 And do we have a lot of potatoes planted and to plant? Um, we have a few planted and we have many, 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 many more to plant. Yes. So <laughs> we may, um, we may do some container or try container again because I know that everyone else swears by container planting. I don't think we either drilled enough holes and the soil was too wet or we did something wrong last year. So we're gonna probably experiment with that again. But there are lots of different herbs that can go with. So we've got some basil, some basil, some parsley, some basil, and some thyme. I think basil is what you get when you cross breed parsley and basil. There you, you go. You get basil. And some slow bolt cilantro. Cilantro bolts very, very quickly in this environment. We're not used to that. We're used to having it for a long amount of time in Oregon. So getting used to this climate, definitely changing up when we plant and how we plant. So a lot of this you'll see, we'll probably have some taller items that will shade the other uh, lower items that tend to bolt more quickly. So there's a lot of levels going on here, uh, but lots of different cabbages. Um, so cabbages, we've also got peas and- Those are, are those the sugar peas? These are- oh, Oregon giant peas. These are giant peas. Interesting heirloom. Um, so peas and beans also go well. We do have snap peas in here. Oh, good. Um, there's a lot of snap peas back here. Yeah. Uh, they're just towards the back. I like getting those off of the vine when I'm walking past the garden yeah. and just Chomp, 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 chomp. That was that was one of my favorite things growing up. My uncle, he had a 
uh, right by his house, he had his personal garden outside of where all of his other uh, larger commercial crops were. And he always had peas and I would just decimate his garden. Mm -hmm. I do not like canned peas. I will not eat canned peas, but I love fresh peas. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the uh, triggers for me is canned peas. Uh, marigold, um, this will be in a lot of different areas. Uh, all sorts of different types of radishes. We've got red radishes, white icicle radishes. There's some black ones in here as well. Here we go, there's the black ones. Yeah, black spinach radish. Interesting. And, and then some spinach, it's Spanish. What? Oh, black Spanish. Spanish, I did that last time too. <laughs> <laughs> some spinach, some lettuces. What I found in the research, since we have so many potatoes and we're mounding our potatoes, there's kind of that bare space in the middle. Lettuces uh, are not deep rooting and they go really, really good in the, in the, the valleys. In the valley of the mounds. Of the mounds. And so we can plant different rows within that. And also when the potatoes grow up, they can give it a little bit more shade. Uh, so yours doesn't bolt or wilt as quickly. And then we've got uh, quite a few different types of beets. Uh, beets, we loved the pickled beets last year. Um, kind of here. Yeah, so Kinsley, please stop. Uh, we have uh, Cylindra beet, we have Early Wonder beet, Detroit Dark Red, and Early Wonder Tall Top beet. So. Lots of beets. And we know there's only two of us. We're planting a lot for our animals as well this year. We're a lot more than we did last year. We want to make sure that we supplement their diet in and not just, you know, we give them non-GMO food and starters. They obviously have, like our chickens, all free range and they're able to get bugs and eat the grasses as well, but we do want to give them additional yep. uh, stimulus. And here's your sweet peas. Good. Sweet your peas snap, are good. Your sugar snaps. Good. I like them. And more lettuces, more cabbages. What kind um, of lettuce do we have? So <clears throat> we have uh, Waldman's Green. And that's cabbage. Uh, it's just cabbage, just um, early golden acre. Is that the type of early, early golden, golden acre. acre cabbage? Okay. And then here's some more sugar snap peas and some more jade beans. So again, a little bit of a mixture with some nasturtiums. Okay. So this is just one area. And again, this is a, one of our larger areas. It actually might be multiple areas. Yeah, it'll As be I multiple. mentioned, we have so many potatoes. And we go through potatoes like crazy. We uh, we eat a lot of them. So, and last year we thought that what was it, 140 pounds that we got? Yeah. We ended up going through that in like a week. <laughs> pretty pretty quickly. It was a little surprising. It wasn't a week. It was. No. And so these um, items are going to be with or near the tomatoes. A uh, bunch of basil. It fell out of the container. You harvested this from our basil last year, right? Yes, that's Kept all basil seeds, seeds from from our uh, what grew last year. Uh, so with tomatoes, obviously most people know that basil and peppers go really well. We love sweet peppers. We're not real big spicy fans. And so a lot of what we will be planting is either pepperoncini or um, I'm gonna try these Cubellas. I've never tried them before. Um, not Cub Cubanelle. Oh, Cubanelle. Or Cubanae. Cubanae. Cubanae, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try those peppers. Yep, we have a sweet sunbright pepper and bullnose pepper. And some jalapeno. Jalapeno pepper, yellow banana sweet pe pepper, tangerine dream sunbright. And then what is this? This is uh, Grand Bell Mix Pepper. Yeah. And then there'll be some other things in there like onions and parsley and then some zinnias. Zinnias are also another one that was recommended to plant in that area because they help uh, with some of the issues that tomatoes can get. So we're gonna definitely have a bit of a variety in, in our tomato areas. We have I think I mentioned we planted earlier this year, it was about 60 tomato plants. I think approximately 30 of them are still doing really, really well. It's probably a little bit higher than that. It was a higher than 50% germination rate. It was probably closer to 40. So we do have a couple areas that will put our different uh, tomato. Uh, we have, I think three variations of, of cherry tomatoes 
And then we've got the black crim, the yellow, uh, is it yellow? I want to say it's Jubilee, but then I might- The golden think. Jubilee. And then there are some red ones and some paste potatoes. What, seriously? What's that all about? What? I don't know. Oh, Did battery's gonna die. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We just want to talk seeds. <laughs> Here we go. And we're back. We're back. This okay. is some technical difficulties today. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling with the bunches. Normally we edit that out, but in this vlog we're not going to. Hi. Did you just realize we were here? Are you going to join us? Is this this is going to be your favorite? I can feel it. Okay, so this is gonna be... <laughs> Does it have the pumpkin in it? I think so. Um, this is the large, or it might be this one that has the pumpkin. Uh, this is gonna be the large plot, and there's like two of these that are gonna go in the large plot, and that's the one that our neighbor recently... Uh, disked. Disked for us. And this is, we're gonna, this year we're gonna try Three Sisters. We've been wanting to try that for a while. And around the edges, we're gonna do different melons and different uh, squashes and things like that. So uh, quite a bit of variety in this one. I'm gonna try to sort it a little bit better. So we have... Yeah, you can't, you can't just breathe into be... the microphone there, buddy. <laughs> well, he can and he will. <laughs> uh, we've got two different variations of uh, corn. So we've got a bicolor uh, double sweet and a uh, bantam sweet. And those are going to be planted first once they have a couple weeks in the ground and are starting to go. Then we're going to go back in and plant our uh, squash and our beans so that the corn is a little bit high enough to, for the beans to start trailing up once they start coming up. And then, so we've got a couple different types of squash in here and a couple different variations of beans. I also have a couple different summer squashes as well. So little bit of a variety with some summer squashes and also um, some crookneck and some spaghetti squash as well as I think that there I thought there was a maybe oh no that was the other one that was the zucchini one uh, and then the beans so we've got some garden beans and then we also have um, some colorful garden beans so these are we planted some of these last year and they came up and I think they came up like a really pretty couple pretty color mm -hmm. if I remember last year mm -hmm. And then we have the different melons. I am a cantaloupe fanatic. I will sit and eat an entire cantaloupe in one sitting. And then every time I walk, it sounds like I have an ocean in my belly, uh, <laughs> but I absolutely love it. So four different variations of cantaloupe. I'm not a big honeydew fan, but I figured it'd be good for the animals. Uh, I might eat one, but that one's mostly for the animals. And then we've got- Hearts of gold cantaloupe, honey rock cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. Planters Jumbo Cantaloupe, mm -hmm. gigantic. Uh, that's another Hearts of Gold one. Oh, another, yeah, okay, I got two of those. Yep, and then your honeydew, your green flesh melon. Yep. <laughs> and then watermelon, we've got uh, sugar babies and crimson sweets and a different, uh, another crimson sweet. They're both heirloom ones, uh, so we'll see, just two different brands. And then a sugar, another sugar baby. Oh, so three sugar babies. So I guess sugar baby is the melon to be. And then we've got Jubilee, and these were from Mr. Wayne and what we had when we were living there. Maybe Jubilee is the name of the, I thought it was the name of the tomato. Maybe I'm wrong in the tomato name. Yeah, that's why I was, think, I was thinking I was wrong because I was like, oh, isn't that the watermelon that I remember? Who knows? Maybe they was, both have Maybe it. they do have a golden Jubilee tomato. Same names. Yeah. And so around that same area, we also have, um, here's some marigold and anything you see in a container like this is seeds that we saved from last year's harvest. So, and this isn't even come close to the amount of marigold seeds we have. We could probably package and sell our own seeds for marigolds this year. What is the box? Mm -hmm. uh, again, I mentioned around the perimeter, we were looking to do the melons and the vining um, items that need a lot more space. And so we plan on planting those and then training them to kind of come out of the garden with the corn and the squash and the beans in the middle. So we do have a couple different uh, zucchinis that we are looking to plant along with a true green um, squash as well. 
And then for some shade, we have some sunflowers and a couple different variations of those. There's different heights. Um, some are gonna get a little taller than others. And then we wanted to do, it looks like I've got three jack-o'-lanterns and one, oh, they're all jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> I guess we're having jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. I thought they were different versions, but they look to be all the same. Mammoth Russian sunflower, uh, border mix sunflower, mm -hmm. true green Hubbard squash, uh, cas uh, ca caserta, caserta, caserta <laughs> zucchini, and then a dark star zucchini. Yep. Yummy, I think, I don't know. I think. I'm not really a zucchini fan. I like them in cake. Cake. I like and bread. I like the moistness of them. Yeah, uh, they will be mostly for the animals, or they will be in baking. I am not at all a fan of eating them plain. Sometimes, if you roast them correctly, they're mm. good. Uh, but some of the squashes, I'm actually allergic to, so a lot of those are going to be for Nate. Or... No, because I'm also allergic to them. Oh, so I guess those are all going to the animals. Yeah. So we do have quite a bit for the animals that we're planning to to make sure we have. Good. Uh, some dill and some more marigold seeds again that we saved. And this is my little carrot patch because I think besides melons and potatoes, carrots are the other thing. I think I could live on cantaloupe, <laughs> potato, and carrots. I'd be a happy girl. <laughs> That'd be an interesting meal. The cantaloupe doesn't quite pair with the uh, other two. Just making sure I have my liquids. Uh, so. Uh, I'll let you go through the carrots because there's a ton of them. Oh, wow. Um, these are all carrots. Okay. <clears throat> Red cord chutney. Chutney? Chantney. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Uh, scarlet nant nanties. That Two of those. Is, yeah. Two scarlet nanties. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> imp. I don't have my glasses and, you know. Uh, Imperator? Imperator 58. <laughs> Sounds like a, it's, it's a non-GMO. Interesting, oh, it's an heirloom seed too, wow, yeah. okay. Um, oh, here we have a Royal Chantney, Chantney again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that they would have such crazy names. That's right, that's why you passed it off I, to me. I guess, you know, it, it worked. <laughs> uh, then we have cucumbers, so we have market more, straight dates, tender greens, and munchers. Sorry, I guess I took the easy pile. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> uh, so those will go together. Uh, and I think that these are container and raised bed items. Um, so the cucumbers will grow up the trellis and the carrots will be along the bottom. Perfect. And then another container, uh, it's just rosemary and strawberries. I don't know that we need to take them out. People all know what rosemary and strawberries are, but basically, oh, these need to go back with the carrots. Okay. Uh, the rosemary, love rosemary, cook with it all the time, but here it freezes and it's a different climate than we're used to. We, we're used to having a rosemary bush all year long. Mm -hmm. And in Oregon, we had a rosemary bush that was probably it's as big ginormous. as this table. It was, it was at huge. least probably five foot wide and about four foot tall. And it was just amazing. And we missed that. We missed that plant. We should have brought it with us <laughs> in the RV. Rosemary. It would have smelled amazing all the time. Yeah. So this year when I planted rosemary, I had it for a couple months and it froze. I didn't realize I needed to cover it or bring it in in containers. So I'm going to do some container uh, gardening for some of the herbs that I do want to keep longer term. And also I'll be planting some of them inside of the house in our hydroponic unit as well so that we can have them longer in the season. We will look to be getting a greenhouse at some point it's uh, something we really want, but again, it's we're, we're focusing on the animals, making sure they have everything that they need first, and then we'll continue to work on better prepping, because I think a greenhouse, obviously, we would have already had all of these started, and then as soon as we're ready to put them in the ground, we could, so. Yeah. Yeah. So to organize all of this, um, you guys may have seen this ad on YouTube uh, from a company called, I think it's Seed Time. Okay. It's an online, app basically that you list out all of the stuff you're going to be growing and it gives recommendations based on your location when you should uh, either direct sow or start them as 
uh, seeds for transplant and then uh, tells you when to move the transplants out and then when to harvest, all that kind of stuff. So we didn't quite follow the recommendations of all of the, the planting guide or in the, in the bed prep, but you can lay out your garden space mm -hmm. in a visual and then show where you planted things and then it'll tell us when we need to harvest because last year that was one of the challenges we had is when do we harvest the stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's, you know, a tomato's off. It's <laughs> when it's ready, but like some of the other stuff, like are our carrots ready? Potatoes whatever. was the first time we grew potatoes. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of mixed, I think, feedback on potatoes. Some people do it at a certain time of year. Some wait till the foliage is completely died back. Uh, some so, keep them in the ground until they need to use it. Exactly. I mean, so, yeah. So we'll, <laughs> we'll be trying that out just to help us organize a little bit better. Yeah. But I'll put a link to it down below. Not a, not a sponsored thing at all. It's just something that we're going to try out. Yeah, we'll let you know. We, we've already inputted all the things that we wanted to grow, and it's on a calendar. And I will admit, it's a little overwhelming when you have this much. Uh, the calendar is just, like, insane. All like, of this is in there? Most of it is in oh, there. Oh, wow. There's um, not every version and variety, yeah, right. but carrots are in there, and strawberries are in there, and, mm -hmm. you know, beans are in there, and squash and zucchinis. Yeah. So, so we'll just have to go back in and, and update the date that we planted, planted them, mm -hmm. so that way it can readjust its, yeah. its dates. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that we're doing this. Uh, I feel behind, but I think we'll be okay. It's, I think it's, we're, a, it's a long. It's a long growing season here. We are behind, but we have we do have lettuce in the house that is growing, and some herbs in the house that are growing, and arugula and some other things. So we and then our we got our kale and our spinach mm -hmm. and chard and lettuces in the ground out here yeah, as well. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. And then mm -hmm. so we have all of that in there. And then we do have, you know, our tomatoes already started. So there, we're in different stages and different. Um, but again, we like to experiment whether we like starting the seeds, whether we like direct sowing. Because I think last year we direct sowed. No, we didn't really direct sow a lot. We did almost everything from starts. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we also went out and bought starts. So we, like sweet potatoes I sweet bought. Sweet potatoes and, you bought. Yeah, which I still might do. Yeah, I don't think we have any sweet potatoes. Any slips. Any no. slips. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we would have to either get starts yeah. at this point. Yeah, which I'm okay with Yeah. for now. So, <laughs> we got our compost yesterday. Yeah. We got... Um, ten scoops. Ten scoops. Yep. So, ten. They're three-quarter uh, of a ton. Mm -hmm. So, we'll call it seven, seven tons of... Compost. Seven and a half tons of compost. Yeah, and then we got the mushroom blend, mm -hmm. the mushroom variety. Which our neighbors swear by. So yep. we'll give it a try. Got and that yesterday. I think I've seen a couple folks commenting too when we talked about compost that they also get a mushroom variety and they speak very highly of it too. So mm -hmm. yeah, and then you also said that somebody said don't put the mulch that we got down on garden beds because mm -hmm. it's too hot. It robs uh, the, the, the ground of nitrogen. So we won't be doing that. So good. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I was going to make big old rows with compost or with mulch and then put compost on top of it. And oh, and why is yeah. it nothing started? It'll burn everything. Yeah. It's just too, it's, it's just too hot. hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's too green. It's too fresh. So yeah, there's that. And then we'll probably do, I do want to still do, try Hugo culture again this year. Um, we did it in a container last year, but it wasn't really that effective for us, but I think a Hugo culture is more of a long-term thing. It is. I mean, we, we filled the base of the container with some sticks and stuff mm -hmm. for maybe some help with volume. Yeah. But but I want to do like mounds, like Hugo culture mounds. So it's almost like a raised garden bed mm -hmm. effect where you stack the sticks and then you put all the soil on top and then you plant on the sides of it. And that's another way with not using up a ton of space that you can do a nice garden and have those levels. So we'll see if we can get to that this year. That was the hope. Um, so we'll we'll continue to keep y'all posted on, on what methods we're doing and what we're trying. Oh, they'll be part of the whole thing. Oh yeah. You know, given that we're daily vlogging. <laughs> <laughs> Might take you along for planning one day. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, that was a pretty good one. All right. So. Lots of seeds. Yep. Let's wrap it up and then uh, we'll say goodbye and we'll see them tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>